بسم اللہ خان رہی میں اسلام علیکم ایوری ون وی آر موونگ مور آن ٹو دی مائکرو لیول ڈفرینسز اینڈ دا ویریس ایسپیکٹس اینڈ پرسپیکٹوز آف کارپوریٹ گورننس ناؤ وی وی فرسٹ ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ انٹرنل آڈٹ اینڈ وی وی ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ آڈٹس دین وی موڈ اباؤٹ دی اوریجنس آف ڈیولپمنٹ اینڈ آلسو لاز اینڈ ٹو ڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ سم تھنگ وچ از اے ویری انٹرسٹنگ ٹاپک اینڈ دیٹ از آلٹرنیٹ کارپوریٹ گورننس کنٹرولس Now, when we are talking about this, so we have looked in the past many sessions about the different models, the different frameworks, the different mechanisms, uh, the different dimensions of corporate governance. But now we're going to move forward and look at uh, alternate corporate governance controls, which are less classical and more innovative in its context and approach. Now, when we are looking at these, then there is a market-based outsider system, uh, which basically is typified to a dispersed ownership. a clear separation of ownership and control, lower debt equity ratios and sophisticated financial markets. Now, in the more advanced countries, we see that this market-based outsider system basically tends to exist. So, we see it in America, we see it in Europe, we see it in Japan, we see it in Australia. And again, they have their own texture and also contextualization. But broadly speaking, it is market-based. Definitely, it is external through dispersed ownership. And that basically means that there could be sometimes uh, hundreds and thousands of uh, shareholders, uh, a clear separation of ownership and control. So whoever the owners are, they have nothing to do with the control of the organization. They're not even part of the board of directors and the top management is independent uh, in totality. We see a lower debt equity ratio, which tends to exist. And we see sophisticated market uh, um, uh, mechanisms basically in control of that. Now, when we are talking about a market-based outsider system, In this system, there is less incentive for outsiders to participate in the control of the corporation except through equity market. The interest of outsider stakeholders are not formally represented. So again, we see there is a lot of independence in the organization. Usually, large corporations have this type of market or it is being done in the advanced country. So this is characteristic of that. Investors themselves often have less interest in the strategic goals of the enterprise. Investors show interest in the short-term returns that are available in the market-based system. So again, the investors are not for the long term. Yeah, some there are, but many are there just for the short term. They're playing the stock market. And based upon that, they are rappling in uh, their, uh, uh, their profits and then uh, going into different organizations. And therefore, uh, we see that there is a lot of fluidity and there is a lot of uh, deviation. Uh, there are a lot of undulations in this market-based outsider system. Now, when we're talking about the market-based insider system, then that is typified by highly concentrated ownerships, high debt equity ratios, higher rate of bank credits, and representation of banks on the board of corporations. So what we see is, is that this is a more limited model in its context, and that's why it's the insider system. We see that the bank corporations who are lending huge amounts of money to the corporation, they are a part of the board. High debt equity ratios tend to exist, and the ownership is uh, limited in the hands of a few. And there can be minority shareholders, but the majority shareholders have a very, very strong equity base Uh, and thereby have this control. Highly concentrated ownership is closely connected with the managerial control of the enterprise. Higher rate of bank credits is due to the closer relationship with banks that are often represented on the board. And what we see is, is that uh, most of the members uh, of the board are actually uh, shareholders, uh, the large shareholders. So not only the banks, but also the large shareholders are over there. And therefore, they have this uh, direct and indirect control of the whole organization and at least giving it a strategic direction. Now, in the uh, insider system, uh, hostile takeovers are rare because there is such a high concentration of shares uh, existing in a few hands that it's difficult to take over. While in the outside one, hostile takeovers are possible when different organizations or investors tend to uh, vulturize uh, upon the different shares and accumulate them and then uh, show their majority and take control of the particular organization, but not in the insider systems. And there's often a dense network of supportive relationships uh, with the related businesses. So again, what we see is, is that Uh, there is more connectivity, uh, there is more uh, individualization, and we see that even uh, the different contextualization of relationships is based upon uh, how the network uh, tends to exist. So what we see is that fundamentally, the insider and the outsider systems are different uh, in texture, complexity, uh, in, in their frameworks, in their outlook, in their inlook. And again, what happens is that in one, there is a lot of control, and the other one, there's dispersed control or there's external control. And then uh, we see that the shares are in one particular hand and the other one, we see that the shares uh, are uh, more uh, dispersed 
uh, with uh, lesser chances of getting that control. But in that one, then what we see is that there can be hostile takeovers, while in this one, we usually see that it is usually family driven or bank or financial institutions driven. So this is the difference between uh, both of these systems. And again, it depends upon uh, where uh, the organization is and the characterization and textualization uh, depends upon uh, which type uh, of models are being applied. But these are the broad uh, parameters and spheres of these two systems. Thank you so much.